Welcome back everyone to another episode of Tie and Gate Builds. Today we're gonna build a scoreboard. This is actually a very old scoreboard of mine. If you couldn't tell, there's nails sticking out the side, the lights aren't aligned, it's just made of pine. Who makes things of pine nowadays? So in this build, we're gonna go over exactly what I did on the tech side of things to get this working because that actually functions fine. In a later build, Later build, we're gonna actually show how to make this thing from scratch with wood and hook up the electronics and all of that. But this build, we're gonna go over programming, how to get the Raspberry Pi web server up, and how to control this scoreboard with the circuit I use. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and throw on some Bruce Springsteen. All right guys, here's the nuts and bolts of the operation. You can see here we have a Raspberry Pi on the end here, and it's controlling all of the LEDs. Now this build is very similar to the message board build that I did previously. So if you have any questions about the circuitry specifically, I'd refer to that video. It has a lot more detail. But at the end of the day, we effectively have seven message boards. We have one here, one here, one here, and then we have one for each of the numbers. They're all strung up in a snaking formation, and at the end of the snake, they connect to the other message board. And I'm able to control them because they're WS2812B LEDs. These LEDs are individually addressable, so I can put whatever formation I want on screen. The way the Raspberry Pi is actually able to show messages to the screen is because of this circuit here. So, Raspberry Pi only outputs a voltage from the data signal of 3.3 volts. Unfortunately, the WS2812B LEDs need a 5 volt data signal. So we have to use this 5 volt power supply and a step up circuit in order to get the Raspberry Pi to have an effective voltage to send data through all of these message boards here. If you have any questions about how the circuit's hooked up or why we need the voltage or what WS2812B LEDs, I really recommend watching the message board video I made. It'll make everything clear here. But effectively, what you need to do is hook up seven of these message boards at any LED lengths you want. I have an 18 by 12 here, 17 by 12, 18 by 12, and then all of these numbers are three by five. Okay, great. So once you get the scoreboard set up as described before with the circuits and wiring, you can move forward with downloading the program to start displaying numbers and logos to the screen. The link to the repository is in the description. This repository requires some requirements, the same requirements actually as the message board. So if you have any questions on installing them, I highly recommend watching the previous video on this. And basically there are two requirements. One is the Bibliopixel library and the other one is the driver to control the WS2812B LEDs. Bibliopixel is basically a wrapper to control that driver and it allows us to do very easy things that control messages to the screen. So now we'll walk through the code. If you list out the repository, you see there's four files, four main files. The first one is drawscore.py. This is just a simple script to display things to the score to make sure it's working right. We have drawscore.update.py. This is what we want. This will update based on the scores.json file. And then we have scoreboard, which is just a directory which has the logic for displaying to the scoreboard and we'll walk through exactly what's going on in this logic right now. So in this draw scoreboard update file, you'll see we have a basic configuration. This is just listing out how many LEDs basically are in each section. For the team name section, here's 18 by five, that's my dimensions. In the timer section, it's 17 by five, those are my dimensions. In the scores section, it's three by five for me, and so forth, and you can see we initialize this bibliopixel object, just a driver for the WS2812B LEDs, and then we initialize this other bibliopixel object which we use to control the message board. Important things to note here is if you want to change the name of the home away you can change them here and the amount of time on the board I have 1200 which is about 20 minutes and then we also have the delay which is going to be how quickly the home and away names scroll across the screen. Now if we take a look at the update animation which is the bulk of the logic you'll see that most of the configuration is done in the very top of the file there are five sections here, the home name section, the timer section, the away name section, and then the home score and away score. Basically, you need to make sure that the indexes of the start and end are the same as they are designed in the circuit. So, for example, I have an 18 by 5 home section name, and that means that there's 90 LEDs. It starts with 0, and then it goes to 89 because we're inclusive, that's 90 LEDs. Now, that connects directly to the timer section, so the next LED in that will be the 90th LED in the index, and there are 17 by 5 
LEDs in that section. So there are 85 LEDs in that section, which means there's 175 total at this point. But since we're inclusive, that's 174. And that is immediately connected to the away section and so forth. So it goes like that. Now you need to make sure you indicate the correct number of rows. And you also don't need to worry about this as this will change based on the home and away name that you gave it previously. This animation will change based on what are in the scores file. So the scores that JSON file controls what is the away score and what is the home score. And these numbers will change with the web application that we're going to spin up. Great. So now that you have an understanding of the code and you've adjusted the configuration to match your scoreboard, the next thing is to get the scored application up and running. So I'm going to list that out again just to be safe. And then we're going to run sudo python3 draw scoreboard update.py. And now the scoreboard is actually up and running with the scores that are located in the scores.json file. And this is actually pretty useless to us right now because a scoreboard is, is only really good if it can change score. So the next thing we need to do is spin up the web application. So in this tab here, I've already downloaded the other application in my repository. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And this is actually talked about in a previous video as well, and it explains exactly what you need to do to install this. Basically, you need to install RVM, which is a Ruby version manager, and then you need to install the correct Ruby version manager, and then you need to spin up the Rails application. So if you have any questions, I refer to that video. So here, if you list it out, you see it's just a basic Rails application, and when we spin it up, we're going to say bin Rails server, and then we're going to bind to 0, 0, 0, 0. That just means that any host can connect to this. And after a long time of waiting, the, you can see the Rails application is up and running. And the scoreboard application is still running. And so there is an endpoint that I created at this Raspberry Pi gateway application that will allow us to change the score. And basically the endpoint is scoreboards slash change score. And then you send it the home and away score. And we'll do that test right now. So once you get the web application up and running, you just need to send a post request to this endpoint. You could easily change this to a get in the Rails application. It's very simple. But I have a post here, and so I'm going to use Postman. You need to send the home score parameter and also the away score parameter. And here I'm just setting the scores to 17 and 21 respectively. And you could see here it's just the scoreboard slash change score. And also we're hitting the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, which in my case is this IP address, and it's running on port 3000. So when I send the request, you'll notice I get a response and there's no error. So that means that it did change the score and it actually is working. And just for completeness, I will walk through the code at the endpoint. So we have the scoreboards controller here. It has a change score action. In here, we call a helper to change the score, given the home score and away score. And then we return the JSON of what was given. So in this helper here, we clean up the input so that we make sure there are numbers. And then based on the path of the scores.json file, we write to it what is the home score and away score. So you will have to change this depending on the setup of your Pi. I typically have a scripts folder in my Pi's home directory, and in there I have all my repositories. So this will work pretty much for every Pi that I own, but you'll have to change this based on your configuration. If you wanted to change this to a GET request instead of a POST and be able to send this request in your phone or your other laptop, you can go to the roots.rb file and you can change this POST to a GET. If you want more information on how to set this up, I do go into a little bit more detail on a previous video on setting up a web server if you are interested. That about wraps it up for this one, guys. If you have any questions about the build, please leave in the comments. I will get to them. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something today. I know I did. If you like stuff like this, I have a bunch of videos similar to this, so you can probably check them out if you're interested. We also do woodworking here, and next week, Gig and I are going to build a backyard build. If you like what you see, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. You could also join our chat group on our Meggle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't join that, please. <laughs> Until next week, we'll see you then.